Welcome to the Craft to Career Podcast with Elizabeth Chapel, where every week we dive into how you can turn your craft into a successful career. Get ready to have the career you've always dreamed of. Welcome to the Craft to Career Show. This is episode 40, my best tips for business success. And I'm excited to announce I've been doing a little uh, giveaway of sorts with some of my favorite mixers products. And to enter, all you had to do was leave a review on the podcast. So I'm going to read a review and also announce that this is the person who is going to win the mixers packs. So congratulations to Red75. And the review says, packed with good information. I'm not a quilter, but I am someone who makes a living from my creations. I cannot believe how helpful this podcast is for turning your art into a business. I listened to the episode on creating a membership twice and took tons of notes, and now I'm hooked. Elizabeth really knows her stuff. So Red75, thank you so much for your review, and good luck with your membership, with your creations, and with your art. I love that this has been helpful for you. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me and let me know because I would love to help. And for those of you who are also enjoying the podcast, I want to share right now as I'm recording this, it's early January 2022. And starting at February 7th until February 12th, I will be opening the Craft to Career course. This is a course where I will be diving deep helping you to start or grow your creative business. If you're liking the tips that you're hearing on the podcast and you want to really dive deep and implement this into your business and get my eyes on your business and get some personal feedback, then this is the course for you. This again, it only opens once a year and that is going to be in February. So if this is something you're interested in, click the link in my bio. There is a page that can give you more information about the craft to career course, and you can join the wait list where I will come and reach out to you and let you know as registration gets closer. And with that said, I am really excited to dive into the best tips for business success. And this podcast could go so many ways because there's, there are so many tips for business. But when I really scale it back and think about the best tips for business success, it really can be summarized in the things that I am going to talk about today in the podcast. And I think it's going to be a lot simpler than you might think it would be. So I'm going to start with a story that I got while reading a book called Essentialism. It's by Greg McEwen. I think I'm saying that right. It's M-C-K-E-O-W-N. This is definitely a book that I recommend. It's all about having less in your life. And this is one of the key things that's really brought up this idea for the podcast today. So so the story is about Nora Ephron. Nora has written movies best known for Sleepless in Seattle and When Harry Met Sally. And her success as a screenwriter has a lot to do with her ability to get to the heart of the story. She is able to just really get to what what is the meat of this? What's really going on here? And she attributes this to being a journalist. She took her very first journalism course in high school. And her journalism teacher taught Journalism 101 at Beverly Hills High. He, on the very first day, said, okay, we are going to talk about a lead. When you are writing uh, something as a journalist, you need to be able to write a lead, which is who, what, when, where, why. So that means you need to listen to all the information and be able to summarize that for a lead. So he said, all right, I'm going to give you some information and you all need to come up with a lead, the best lead, short, concise. So it goes on to say, Mr. Peters, the principal of Beverly Hills High, announced that the entire school faculty will be attending a colloquium in Sacramento on new teaching methods. Speakers include anthropologist Margaret Mead and the California governor. 
And he went on to give some more information and said, all right, go ahead. Let's write your leads. And the students went to work coming up with the best things that they could, everyone a little bit different. And they turned them in and the teacher said, okay, I'm sorry, but you're all wrong. The lead is there will be no school Thursday. So as I listened to that story, while I was listening to the essentialism book, I was my goodness, it's true. I thought I got distracted by all of the details. Oh, that name. Okay. Write down the the city. Got to write the city and just getting so distracted in the details that it was impossible for me to step back. And when he said that, I was like, oh my goodness, hello. It was almost like too obvious. So I want to relate this to your business. How often have you seen, I'm just going to use Instagram for an example right now, but you are scrolling through Instagram and a sponsored post comes up and it says, do you want to get published in the New York times? I'll show you how, or what you really need right now is to sell a tiny offer. Creating a course is the best way to earn money. Get on Pinterest, grow your audience on Pinterest, drive traffic to your blog, any number of things. And you might think, oh yeah, or TikTok. I need to get on TikTok. That's how people are growing right now. This is getting in the way of what you are trying to do as a business, of your success as a business owner. It's very easy to get distracted by the noise. It is very easy to look how other people are growing and having success and thinking, well, that's what I need to do too. That's what it takes. All right, I will do it. Do not get distracted by the shiny object. So to begin, I want you to ask yourself right now, what is your main product? Our goal, your goal as a business owner is to keep the main thing, the main thing. So I know if you are like me, if you are an entrepreneur, the ideas flow And, oh, I should do this. Oh, I want to do this. Oh, I made this and I should share how I made this. It is so easy to get distracted, but sit down and and write down or pause the podcast and just answer the question in your mind. What is your one main product? What do you want to be known for? What can you be an expert in? And don't be intimidated by that and think, an expert? Goodness, I'm not qualified to be an expert. Rarely do people feel like they're qualified to be an expert. This just means choose the one thing that you are passionate about, that you want to focus on, that you want to sell. That's it. Just do the one thing. Now, I know that this is terrifying But I cannot stress enough the importance of focusing, choosing one thing. If you can be disciplined to do that, you have already surpassed so many people. So choose the one thing. And now just an aside here, as I go forward and talk to anyone who I'm talking business with, I am just assuming that you are ethical, that you're determined to provide a good, honest product. You're not just out trying to make a buck. Um, Sometimes, you know, I'll talk to people about business success and they'll say things like, well, yes, as long as you're being honest. So that's just going to be a given. I don't want to have to make that um, caveat. You know, I don't want to have to make that explanation every time. I am just going to hope and assume that you as the business owner and listener that you, you are out to provide a great product and good service and that you're ethical. Now with this one product in mind, uh, the reason for a business is to earn money. And I just want to talk on that for a second because I also hear some people say money is the root of all evil is money. The obsession with money is bad. Um, I just, if we are going to be on the same page, I want, I don't want to have to explain this, but I want you to, to have the freedom to realize you do not need to apologize for success. You don't need to apologize for earning money. Money is not bad that 
being successful and, and, and earning money doesn't make you a bad person. In fact, the more success you have, the more good you can do in the world. The more money you have, the more you're able to help others and to pave a path that can help other people. And so don't, don't feel bad for, for earning money and don't feel bad for charging money. The point of your business, if it's something different, then, then this is not the place for you. But if you are, if you are creating a business and you want to earn money with that business, then this is a good place for you to be. That's what I'm here to help people with. And I, and I just want to liberate you. This is a very interesting thing, specifically talking with a female audience where often money feels like kind of yucky or slimy, or if I'm trying to figure out how to earn more money, that's not a good thing, but it's, it is a good thing. And the obsession with money or trying to get it in a dishonest way, that's where you can go down a slippery slope, but we are talking about how to earn honest money by bringing value. So just that, just give yourself permission to know that a money, having money leads to many good things. You, the more you have, the more good you can do in the world and, um, and that it's okay to be successful and to want to have success. It's good for us to want to push ourselves and to, uh, reach milestones and so I want to dive back a little bit more and talk about that niche. And yes, I say niche. Some people say niche, but I say niche. So we've got the niche and I've talked about knowing what your main product is, keeping the main thing, the main thing. So again, I know that it's scary and people want to avoid it. And over and over again, people are like, well, I know that you're saying I need to do that, but I know that I can have multiple things and have success. Trust me, you are not alone if you're the first person who's thought this, but also trust me that if you want to start earning more than $100 here or there, or even $1,000 here or there, you will need to niche down and you will need to focus, laser focus on your customers, what they want, what they need. Once you have taken away all the other distractions, all the noise, and you are focusing on this one product or service that you are providing, then you can really spend some time to sit, sit in that, that what it looks like, whatever your business might be. And you can really get feedback from your customers. You can see how their experience is going. What would make this better for them? What questions do they have when they're done using my product? How could I resolve that or take that away? How, what is stopping them from progressing? What, what issues are they having? What are their pain points and how can I fix that? How can I bring more value to them? How can I stand out from my competition? How can I be innovative? Can I look at other people in other industries and see what they're doing? How could I apply that to my one main product? So it really allows you to make your product amazing. And that will stand out from the crowd. So set yourself up as a go-to, as an expert in this area. And sometimes, you know, this might take a little bit of time or growth. Um, for example, I am wanting and ex really excited about broadening the craft to career and the business side of helping people grow their businesses. I have a dream of helping people earn their first $100,000 a year. And before I jump into that, I'm really diving deep. Right now, I have a mentorship program where I have three mentees where I'm taking them on for two months and I am keeping analytics. They're keeping analytics and we're looking together at how much money is coming in every week, how much is going out. What can we do to tangibly get them to be earning more money? And once I have that, then I'm going to do some more samples and some more testing. I'm going to see what their pain points are, where, what are the milestones that I'm seeing across the board when people are at this point and this point. And I'm putting this all together to create a final product that I can put out and it will never be done. So wherever you are in your business, you're never done. I mean, you might think, oh, thank goodness, I finally have this and I'm done. But 
the mark of a successful business owner is someone who consistently has their ear to the floor. They're consistently looking at what, what's missing, what can be better. What, once my customer is done with this, what questions or pain points do they still have and how can I solve that for them? So there's always room for growth and there's always going to be the need to tune out the noise, to stop listening. When someone says, this is how you need to have success. You need to do this. You need to do this. Just focus on your customers and focus on the main thing, keeping that the main thing and thinking of that journalism story not getting distracted by all the names and the dates and move all the noise aside. And what's your main purpose here? What is the, the company that you have? What's the mission for that? And keep focusing on that, which leads us to the next thing, learning to say no. And I have an entire podcast episode, of this it's episode 23 And so go listen to that if you are needing some motivation or inspiration or feeling the freedom to be able to say no. But having less on your schedule allows you to be more available for your business. So whenever you say yes to something, you are saying no to something else. So in my life, Me saying no is looking like I am not going to be at my kid's school as often as some other moms are going to be. My friends who go out to lunch often, I'm not able to go as often. Um, There's some you you give and you take. And and to some people, my, my life might look boring because I'm home a lot. I'm doing a lot on my computer desk and in my sewing room. But having a routine where you know I, I'm going to work on this today and, and if someone says, hey, are you free to do this? Just give yourself a few minutes before you answer and just remember that everything you say yes to, you're saying no to something else. So if you say yes to lunch with friends or whatever it might be, you are saying no to the business. So, I mean, you're not going to say no to everything. We want to have other things in our lives, but try, if this is something you are passionate about and you are determined to have a successful business and grow that and really move the needle, then there, I do invite you to look at your life and see where in your life you can cut some things out to put more energy into your customers how you can help them, how you can really figure out how to bring more value to them. Then with this in mind, so we've got your business. I, hopefully you've really narrowed down what your specialty is, what you're going to focus on, what this one main product is. Now you want to focus on growing your email list. I've talked about this too. If you've listened to other episodes, you know, I've said this isn't a plan. This is the plan. So for now, email is the best way to reach your customers. And I see a lot of people saying, oh, this is amazing. I got 2000 new followers. And my question is, so how many new sales did that lead to? And I've asked people before and their answer is, I don't know. So I can tell you this. If you are putting a lot of time and energy into getting followers and you are not telling your followers to come and join your email list by an enticing way, it does not matter. Those followers are vanity numbers. It'll make you feel good, but it's not going to bring in sales. So great if you're growing your followers. Awesome. If that's going well, the next thing to do is to share with them that you are selling something. Even when you're serving, if you create a post that's educational, at the end of that post, say something like, hey, if you like this, be sure to check out my product or create an opt-in directly from that post. Let's say you do a reel on Instagram and in my world of quilting, let's say you show how to do quilt binding, make a little PDF real quick in Canva, canva canva.com. It looks professional. It's easy to save. Type down the highlights of what you shared in your reel and go to your 
email provider, create an opt-in. And when people opt in, they get that sent to them, that PDF with your bullet points. So now you have this post on Instagram or real, and it's telling you how to do a quilt binding. Then be sure to say in the reel and in the comments, hey, learn how to make a quilt binding. Click the link in my bio to get a free PDF download telling you all the steps shown here in the reel. So every time, great, if you're growing your audience and it's going really well for you, you have got to change that those followers into email subscribers. So however you want to do that, just do that. And on this topic, let them know you are selling something. So I kind of touched on that, but often I hear people say, I don't want to be annoying. I don't want to ask for their email address. I don't want to, I just don't want to annoy them. You know, what's annoying is when people don't know that you're a business and they honestly think that you're just out being an influencer or a blogger. And all of a sudden you surprise I'm selling something and they didn't know. No one likes that. So be upfront that you, with your followers, you're a business. You're not an influencer. You're a business owner. An influencer is someone who promotes other people's products full-time. They're out there growing their audience so they can get paid as an affiliate. And that's one way to earn money. I am not knocking that. You can be very successful simply doing that. But I right now am talking in this podcast about my best tips for business success. So I'm talking to the business owners. You are a business. Let people know that. Let them know repeatedly over and over again. It doesn't have to be annoying. Like don't don't use the wording like go buy my product. That's not going to do the trick. Um, But I think I wrote down a few products that I love that that I'm going to talk about here and, and how they're always talking about what they sell. One is Spanx. I feel like speaking of affiliate, I should be an affiliate for this, but, um, Spanx, I love it. So they have my favorite pants in the world. They are slimming. They're tight around the waist. They're flattering. Every time they post something, they're promoting a product. They are saying, here's a product we have. Click the link in our bio to get it. They, every post, every single post, I, I don't know, maybe they would have a post on like women's day. That's talking about women entrepreneurs, but for the most part, that would be the exception. They're going to be promoting their products and I'd be weirded out if they didn't, I'd be like, wait, what? So why, why are you sharing this? What, what are you selling here? Why, why, why aren't you doing that? Then second of all, I, there's a makeup product that I really like. Um, the reason that I like it is because on Instagram, they have beautiful photos that are very clearly saying, look at this person's face, look at how the makeup looks on them. This is the product that they're wearing. If you want this look, click here and get this product. I never get sick of it. When their stuff comes up, I'm not like, again, you're selling makeup. No, I know that they are. That's why I'm following them because I like their product. And if they didn't have something about that, it would weird me out. Uh, There's also a dog product company that I like. It's good for the earth, healthy for the dog. It's the right size product for my small dog. And it's convenient. They make shipping very easy. Again, whenever their ads come up, I'm kind of excited to see, ooh, what product are they going to tell me about? And it's sometimes with certain companies, I get tired of that product or I don't really need this right now, so I unfollow them. It's not because I'm like, oh, they are so annoying. It's usually, oh, I'm, I don't need any more of that right now. And a lot of the times I go back and I follow them later. So it's not like if someone unfollows you or unsubscribes from your email list, They're not sending you hate mail saying that they hate everything about you. Just that right now, that's not what they're looking for, but it most likely will be again. So stick around and be consistent, but do tell people that you sell things and tell them often and remind them because you are a business and you are selling something. 
And there is, you know, a whole nother topic is how to word things so that people want to buy them. Um, in fact, I'm going to jot that down because that should be a whole nother podcast topic, but you should definitely be telling people that you're, you're selling something that should not come as a surprise to them. So as a recap to my business owners out there, number one, know your main product, narrow it down, become an expert in that thing, become the go-to make, you know, put out a flag, stake a claim. Is that, am I saying that right? (laughs) Stake a claim. We're going to go with that, but put it out there that this is what you're doing. This is what you're about. This is what you provide. And this is the problem that you're solving. Number two, tune out the noise. Focus on growing your email list, and that's it. When people are like, in order to have success, you have got to be published in the New York Times. Is that going to help you grow your email list? If it is, think about it, maybe. But there's just because someone's coming out and saying, look at this, someone got a million subscribers on TikTok, a million followers on TikTok. It's so easy to think, okay, yeah, I better do that because we're constantly looking and thinking of ways to get new eyes on our product and company. Don't, don't fall for that. Tune out the noise, focus on one thing, just focus on one thing. And then three, as I kind of mentioned, grow your email list, grow the list. And if you are thinking of how do I do that? then maybe that's another topic I need to do on a podcast, but grow that email list. And then four, let people know that you are a business. Sell stuff. Don't hide it. Don't be afraid to annoy your followers. What's really annoying is you wasting your time getting a bunch of followers who do not care what you have. You are a business. You are here to sell something. And if you have a good product, You will find the people and they will find you who want what you have. You don't want to be gathering a big old following of people who don't want what you have. It's a waste of your time. It's, again, vanity numbers. It doesn't matter. What you are here to do is earn money as a business owner. So just be very clear and upfront with yourself and with your followers what you provide and how it helps them. And that, yes, you are selling something. So, and feel, feel good about that and feel great about success. That's my other last little, I touched at the beginning, but I want to touch on it again. It is great to have success. And I also mentioned a little bit on this idea that I have the mentorship, but if you are an entrepreneur, a female entrepreneur, and you are earning over a hundred thousand dollars a year you are in the top 6% of entrepreneurs. My goal is to, I'm working on creating something. I don't know what that's going to look like yet, but my goal is to help you business owners get into that top 6%. So we are not here just to grow followers or have fun with this or that, or get free product. We are here to get into the top 6% to earn an income to create a product that serves people and that brings you success. And there is no shame in that. There is so much joy to be had in the success that you can have both for yourself and for others. So that is my goal and my mission. And it's really fun for me to be narrowing down that vision as well. As I talk about narrow it down, that's something that I'm really excited to create and and help business owners with. So with that said, I am going to be back next week, next Friday with another Craft to Career podcast episode. I would love to have you there. If you have questions, if you have a topic that you want to hear about, please let me know. I would love to hear from you. And if you are finding this podcast helpful for you and your business, leave a review. You can even screenshot what you're listening to and post it on your social media accounts. 
share it with people, tag a friend, let them know that this is here. This is a resource for business owners, for entrepreneurs. It's a free resource that people can use to get their business going or to grow their business. And that is my dream is to help you creative entrepreneurs out there reach higher heights to have more success. And so please share this with your friends and subscribe, leave a review. And I will see you all next week on the Craft to Career podcast. I hope you have a wonderful and productive week. 